can do after that. So what happens is a lot of times people will put cars on their wall. You see this in network marketing or sales or whatever. They do it, but without God, and then they try to add God's name to it. Because here's the difference. When God inspires you to do it, it will well up within you, and your best Christian friends will tell you you're, you're not hearing from heaven. That's always a nice confirmation. But, uh, anyway, <laughs> you want me to walk around Jericho how many times? <laughs> a clump of figs on a boil? You want me to lay on it? God will give you some contrary instructions. I'm going to tell you a contrary instruction. Here's one. You want to have more? Give it away. You want more? So. Oh, you want to be exalted? Humble yourself. Upside down principles. Right? right? They, they don't work in the world. you got to fight and get your promotion. God says just humble yourself. I'll promote you. Yeah. Well, there's a lot to think about. Okay, so here we are. Back to how to share Jesus without fear. And so, what will happen is, you just turn to Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. And I like to point out to people, chapter 3, verse 20 says, and I, I, I say, you know, the words in red, that means that this is Jesus speaking. So you just kind of point that out to him. If you don't have a red letter small derringer, you can just tell him. In this book, this is Jesus speaking. Then you have him read this. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will, and will sup with him and he with me. You know, a lot of times you want to have something other than the King Jimmy, right? I mean, this is one of my ten favorite translations, by the way, the King James. Um, but an NIV or an NASB or something that's easy for the reader to understand. But if you don't have anything but a King James, i got news for you. It'll work. It's worked for hundreds of years before we had anything else. But uh, So here's what I like to do. A lot of times they'll get to read. Now, they're already in the spirit at this point. You can tell when God is getting ready to convert a soul because the atmosphere <laughs> changed. Remember, it's him at work. And so they'll start to read, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And I'll just go ahead and... And the Holy Spirit will then begin to knock on their heart. I mean, remember, the dynamic of the Holy Spirit is what convicts. He's the one that saves. He's the one that fills. He's the one that heals. He's the one that delivers. This is his work, and we are his workmanship that carry his word and his presence into the scene. So go ahead and read that again, Gavin. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door... I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. What does that mean to you? What do you think that's saying to you? Um, that if I let Jesus into my heart, um, then I'll be able to be with him. Kevin, let me ask you a question. Do you eat with your enemies or do you eat with your friends? With my friends. So it doesn't matter what you've done in your past. When Jesus comes in, he's going to have a table food with you, isn't he? Table of peace. He's going to become your friend. Do you hear him knocking on you? Sometimes I'll do this. I'll be like, behold, I stand at the door and knock. I'll just let him go. I'll be like, do you hear him knocking on the door of your heart tonight? And I mean, the Spirit of God will come on and they'll be like, and it'll be that moment of decision. And I mean, the enemy will be at work. It's the valley of decision. Back and forth. Sometimes there's a warfare. But you just let the Holy Spirit do his work. Don't push, don't force. It's his work. And here's the thing. If Gavin receives Christ, since the Holy Spirit's doing the work, who gets the credit? The Holy Spirit. Right? If Gavin doesn't receive Christ, who's responsible? No. It's never our fault when they don't receive Christ, and it's never our glory when they do. It's his glory. It's his work. We participate. We get credit for it in heaven. We get crowns, but we get to throw them at Jesus' feet. So here's the deal. You don't get accolades and another notch on your belt buckle when you lead one to Christ. And when someone doesn't receive Christ, you get no condemnation for it. 
Why? Because you did what 90 plus percent of the church isn't doing, which is sharing their faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. right. Wouldn't you like to be the person that led Billy Graham to Christ? Nice downline. <laughs> Holy Ghost Network Marketing. Yeah, yeah. Get the residual on that for a turn. That's pretty nice. And the other thing is, when you ask them to invite Jesus in, you don't have to have them say a sinner's prayer. This is where people get controversial. I mean, I, I don't really see the sinner's prayer in Scripture. Second Illusion 7.14, sinner's prayer. Not there. <laughs> Second Illusion, yeah, right next to Hezekiah chapter 5. <laughs> so, if you think those are in there, you need to start memorizing your Bible like a good Jewish boy. Okay. So the point is this, when we go out and share our faith with other people, we've done our job. We might be the first person that's ever shared the gospel with them, but we may not be the last. Mm -hmm. When you take an elm tree and those little bitty elm tree seeds start to sprinkle everywhere, you ever seen one? Come out in the name of Jesus. Wait, you ever seen one? <laughs> we're, we're demon casting later at Terry's house. <laughs> uh, uh, we had a little too much activity in here last week. We went a little late. Heard it got a little loud after we left. So we're going to be out of here in a timely fashion. If there's ministry that needs to be done, we're going to do that off-site. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, everybody's invited to Terry's to get delivered, cast out demons, heal the sick. It's all cool. Plus, there's coffee afterwards. Um, no charge. Uh, but here's the deal. When we do our job, I guarantee you, God's going to do his. Yeah. He confirms his word. That elm seed will float down. And have you ever seen one or a bunch of them get caught up in the crack in the sidewalk? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're like, big deal. It's a seed. Who cares? You ever seen one take root and begin mm -hmm. to germinate? Mm -hmm. And it starts to pop up? Ah, it's a little thing, no, no big deal. If you don't deal with that seed, you want to know what you get? Broken sidewalk. You get a broken sidewalk. And let me tell you what. If the devil doesn't get rid of the seeds that you sowed with the gospel, it'll go into a crack in that stony heart. It will germinate, yeah. it will come up, and yeah. it will break apart that yeah. stony heart and grow the tree of life within it. Yeah. There's a song that's 15 times is what's talked about. You might be the first, you might be the second, you might be the 15th one to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. In America, I think it's 6.75 times is the statistic. I might be up to 7.65 that a person hears the gospel before they respond and accept Jesus Christ. In third world countries, it's 1.3%. Mm -hmm. 1.3 times. So when Israel Agre goes, first time they hear the gospel, they see the signs and the wonders, the blind eyes, the deaf ears pop open, the dead are raised. You want to know what happens? They want that God. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they get him. Yes. Yes. Over here, we're distracted by, you know, iPads, Blackberries. Go ahead, Mike. Can you share that experience one more time about the night that I think it, I think it was just a car that broke down, and I <laughs> called you, and then there was a guy that you ministered to right there on the spot. Yeah. Um, and this is this was power evangelism. Um, Jeff's. Jeff had a bad tire on the front of his, 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 his van. And I said to him, I said, Jeff, I said, I'm not sure. I think you need to get that tire replaced. And he said, yeah, I got to get to that. So anyway, I get a call from Mary, who's uh, with our ministry. And she says, Jeff's got a, a blowout on his tire. I said, you know, I just sensed something about that, that car. I said, you know, I, I told him he needs to get that thing changed. Anyway, it was not that tire that blew, of course. Um, I'm so prophetic. <laughs> Wrong tire. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, she says, well, he told me not to call you. She said, but the Holy Spirit told me to call you. And I'm like, okay. So I'm like, where is he at? So she tells me. So I call Jeff, and he's like, how'd you know? I'm like, you know, was it a word of knowledge? No, it was a word of Mary. <laughs> so, but the Holy Spirit works through people, right? So, I mean, if the Holy Spirit would have said to me, go to Walmart on I-70 where Jeff is limping along on it, I'd be like, am I hearing accurately? So, anyway, point. 
I go over there, Jeff limps the vehicle over to Walmart. They don't have a truck tire for this thing. So we asked the guy, and he's like, well, there's NTW, is it? NTB? Yeah. NTB. NTB, tire store. And so we limp over there, walk in, and uh, there's a guy there, and, you know, gives us a deal. I think we buy two tires or something like that, to because the other one needed to go also. And uh, the guy's talking about how he used to work for Budweiser. And he was making pretty good money. He was married. He's got two kids. And, you know, we engage him in conversation. In fact, I'll tell you what happened. The Lord had me say something really crazy that shifted the conversation. In fact, when it came out of my mouth, I'm thinking, why did I say that? That's, you know, I was like, that didn't even make sense. And so it was like the conversation went from there and it became a real serious moment. I shared my past where I'd met Jesus in a prison cell in Leavenworth Penitentiary. And I said to him, I said, if you're not right with God in Leavenworth Penitentiary, you're always just one heartbeat away from hell, which is true. It's a thousand times more likely to get killed in the penitentiary than you are on the streets. And he's like, wow. So he became kind of enamored with my past. And so I shared the past. He said, oh, he should have made, must have made a lot of money. Stolen jet airplanes for the Columbians. I'm like, yeah, hotel rooms, champagne rooms, this and that. I said, but let me tell you something. It all comes to an end and none of it's worth it. And so then he began to share. Bottom line was this. He said, yeah, he said, I had a job at Budweiser, but I got injured. And he says, you know, slinging beer or whatever like that. He said, how long ago was that? He said, oh, about two and a half years. He said, my wife left me, you know, this and that. I'm thinking, man, this guy is ripe for salvation. He's had enough of hell on earth. I said to him, I said, you mind if uh, I pray for you for God to maybe touch and heal you? Okay, so Jeff and I kind of went behind the counter in the back little area, laid hands on him, commanded his back to be healed in the name of Jesus, muscles, joints, ligaments, all that stuff to come together. And I said, okay, go ahead and uh, bend over. He bends over, he's like, bends over. He's like, who are you? You're freaking me out. You know, and and <laughs> Jeff, Jeff was there and... Uh, Fun. I said, that's Jesus healed you. He said, the pain's gone. And he's like looking for the pain. You know, how much faith does it really take to get healed? People are like, I'm not healed. But they're healed anyway, you know? That's what he does for non-believers. <clears throat> this thing's really simple. Yeah. Just get prayed up before you go. Pray in tongues for about 16 hours a day and then go out and evangelize. You'll win all kinds of people to Christ. Everybody gets healed. <laughs> Try to pray in tongues on the scene for 16 hours, you'll just break people's eardrums. Mm. Much prayer? Much, Much power. power. Mm -hmm. Little prayer? Little power. Little power. No, power, no prayer? No, no power. power. You got a power problem? You got a prayer problem. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, I spent three days <coughs> at the lake. A friend of mine is giving me a, like a place, a beautiful place at the lake, where I can go at any time. And it's just really tricked out, you know, condo, and it's just got the presence of God in it. I went there for three days prayed in the spirit. I didn't feel the presence of God. I felt like there was a javelin in my back. I felt like I was having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the night, I get up, go to the restroom, come back. There's this chair next to this, this bed, and it's, it's bed with these big... Anyway, I bang my toe, break my toe. I mean, you talk about a miserable three days with Jesus. I mean, it was miserable. I come back, I call Dan Bowler on the phone. I'm like, oh, I'm driving back into town, this and that. He says, well, how was your time with the Lord, brother? I said, it was the most miserable time I've ever had in prayer for three days. He said, <laughs> yeah, it's like that sometimes. <laughs> he says, God dealing with you and your soul, huh? <laughs> and you know what? Sometimes God hides from us. You can read in the Song of Songs, the Song of Solomon, God will hide from you to see if you really are seeking him. I got back that night, I guess it was a week ago, Friday. Who did we, who did we preach on Friday? Dan preached. Dan preached. Mm -hmm. Is it the week? Yeah, I guess Dan preached. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, I went to Salt Lake. 
things happened in Salt Lake, you couldn't have created it. See, God was mysteriously absent and silent, yet he showed up in power where we went. Would he have showed up in power there to heal somebody of blown discs and the business things that occurred that I'm still kind of like, is this really happening? If we hadn't spent three days in prayer alone with Jesus, I don't know. But I'm going to go with the pattern that works. Much prayer, much power. Mm -hmm. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. When we pray, then God does it. Yes. When we don't pray, then we got to do it. <coughs> and he can do it so much better than us. Why don't we let him? Why don't we pray? So this is how to share Jesus without fear. We're going to hand these out. Gavin, would you be so kind as to hand these out? And you can now be equipped. Go to the bookstore or find a Gideon. They'll give you one. This has got a leather cover on it, but it's really just a Gideon's Bible. Highlight those verses, and the verses are in there. And here's the deal. You don't have to use all the verses. Use the ones that the Lord is leading you to use at the time. But start there. Don't oververse them mm -hmm. and oversell them out of the conversion. I've got to ask one more question. Go ahead. What do you do when you pull out your Dillinger and they say, oh, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that Bible. You know what? Do you just... Sometimes okay. that happens. Well, you don't have to believe in it. I, would you just... But do they continue... Do they... It just depends. Here's the illustration. Johnny Appleseed. He was really a moonshiner, but that's another story. But for legend purposes, what did he do? He sowed apple seeds, didn't he? Everywhere we go, Missouri, we got apple seeds. We got apple trees. Why? Why? Because he was trying to grow apples so he could, you know, make apple mash or whatever it was. But we end up with the benefit of those apples, right? Because he and others planted sowed the seeds. seed. They planted the seeds. <laughs> When you sow the seed of the gospel and they don't receive Jesus, did you fail or succeed? You succeeded. You succeeded. Why? Because you obeyed God. Forgot one thing, my notes. Luke 19.10. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. If a person doesn't know Jesus, they're lost. Acts 1 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and under the ends of the earth. That's independence, that's Missouri, that's Canada, Africa. Start in the cubicle next to you. Start in the elevator. You get stuck in the elevator? Oh, I can't believe we're stuck in the elevator. Praise the Lord, time to witness. Do you have any kind of spiritual belief? Really? Aliens? Great. If we're stuck in the elevator, we better start praying. Well, I'll tell you what. We're not like that. No. Spirit of claustrophobia, come out. Yeah. In Jesus' name, we need to get delivered. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We're going to pray for you at the end of the service. Matthew 18, or 28. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely... Jesus says, I am with you, even to the end of the age. That means he's present in the person of the Holy Spirit whenever you go do his work. Philippians 1.6, this is a great verse. 